Hello and welcome to Vanderbilt Divinity School's Meet VDS series. My name is Laura M. Heifetz. I use she, her, and hers pronouns, and I'm the Assistant Dean of Admission, Stewardship, and Vocation. This week, we meet Bobby Smiley, the Interim Director of the Divinity Library and the Religion and Theology Librarian and at Vanderbilt University. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thanks so much for inviting me, Laura. My name is Bobby Smiley, he, him, his. Um, I've been the interim director of the Divinity Library for four and a half years. I started here in May of 2016. And before that, I was the digital humanities and American history librarian at Michigan State University for three years. Well, uh, we will start off with the first question. Tell us about someone who has influenced you on your journey toward becoming who you are. Well, you know, I was thinking about this in terms of, of both, or maybe like an intellectual kind of influence or a professional influence or a personal influence and, and, and somebody who kind of combined those three things. And I will say that um, my immediate predecessor in this position, Bill Hook, has definitely been one of the most profoundly influential people on the journey that I currently find myself as the interim director. I mean, he set a really great example through sort of mentoring me, but also as a librarian, his deep commitment to the profession that he managed to wed very nicely with his own training in theological studies and his commitment to the commitments of the Divinity School. Um, and that relationship um, for me has been one that has been the most rewarding part, one of the most rewarding parts about my position and one that Bill helped um, illuminate in ways that I think have been profoundly influential on me. And I'll say that, you know, he also, he also was keen on mentoring new librarians and kind of shepherding them through the process of becoming professionals. And that, that too, I like to think is reflected in the work I do now. So, um, it's a big credit to him who was the head of the Divinity Library for 32, 33 years. Uh, the next question is, what do you do at the library and how did you come to do it at Vanderbilt? So I'm the interim director, which means that I get to oversee um, a great staff of five other folks and uh, consisting of three librarians and uh, two non-librarian positions. And um, I began here as the religion and theology librarian, principally focused on working with the historical studies faculty and graduate students in the GDR in that area. Um, but really um, over time um, through Bill's tutelage, um, I was able to pinch it for a little while as the acting director when he was on a research leave for six months. And then he created another role for me, an associate director role, where I helped handle day-to-day -day operations um, as he was working in a different part of the library. Um, and then eventually assuming the position he is uh, that I have now after his, after his retirement in 2019. I have a background in a divinity school. I got my MA in um, religion from Yale Divinity School, where my you know exceptionally great academic dean is the exceptionally great current Dean of the Divinity School who generously gave me incompletes um, when I asked for them. Um, but I wanted to leverage that experience and work with the community because I did miss it. And this gave me an opportunity to do that. And I think ultimately I found a kind of professional voice in theological librarianship that I wasn't expecting that allowed me to bring the previous work I had done at MSU and ally it with this new work that I was doing here and the commitments that's kind of baked into that um, in ways that I found to be, again, you know, really, really powerful and inspirational and, and uh, enduring. When do you feel most connected to something beyond yourself? So I'm a real creature of higher education. I actually have never had a, well, with the exception of like a classroom teacher for a couple of years, I've never had a job that wasn't actually in higher education and specifically in academic libraries. And for all its faults, what higher ed does offer um, is opportunities for critical reflection, conversation, 
and engagement in ways I think other spaces don't enable or encourage. And that to me is, is my communion really in those conversations. That's where I find a, a greater sense of transcendence almost, whether it's an engagement in the historical past or whether it's engagement in existential questions or whether it's something politically oriented in a one-to-one -one conversation or something larger. Um, those kind of opportunities to talk, bring what you have both intellectually, personally and otherwise um, to the table, that to me is where I feel connected to something much larger than myself. And I can, I feel deeply connected to a community. And that is one of the things that keeps me, uh, keeps me in this business. Uh, where do you find inspiration besides well, higher ed? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's sort of to riff on that. It mean, very much is. And, and those conversations uh, can be super inspiriting. And I'm, I'm just thinking most recently in a staff meeting we had, um, we were discussing, you know, urgent political issues of the day, and we ended up having this great conversation about um, our role as the Divinity Library um, in the libraries in being a tribune, really embracing the kind of moniker of VDS, of School of the Prophets, kind of that prophetic voice, and um, what we could do informed by a lot of the commitments that we share with BDS. Um, that conversation was so generative in ways that it inspired Keegan Osinski um, to draw up uh, a article, a proposal for an article that we're going to submit to um, theological librarianship discussing these kind of very issues. And again, that was that conversational space that that allowed us, that actually encouraged that type of reflection where wherein we were also bringing you know our training in theological education our commitments um you know both in terms of personal faith or otherwise um and to something that was much bigger than us and something that we felt inspired to uh to talk about could you actually say a little bit more about the library's role in, I guess, contemporary issues and in the Scola <laughs> Prophetarum? Yeah, um, so the divinity overall, I think, you know, libraries have wrestled with, well, maybe they haven't even really wrestled, that's being a little generous. Um, libraries in the past overall have been more or less politically silent and quiet when it comes to urgent issues of the day, especially issues around um, equity, diversion, inclusion, and even access. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I think as the Divinity Library in particular, we are very committed to is to bring those questions to the library itself and making us confront as a library, our role in, um, in combating, combating patriarchy, racism, white supremacy, environmental injustice, um, wealth inequality. I mean, there's all sorts of issues um, that I think uniquely the Divinity Library is situated to raise um, in ways that uh, my colleagues and other parts of the library, this is just not a part of their work. I mean, this informs the work that we do um, foundationally from collections to instruction to outreach um, it's what animates um, our work as a libra as librarians. In fact, you know, one of my colleagues, Kashif Graham, he describes his work as a librarian as it's ministry for him. And I think it is to a certain extent for all of us. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, in the face of the world's struggle and despair, why do you have hope? Considering so much struggle and despair. Um, I have hope because, well, walk this back a little bit. You know, my previous comments, I was talking about the relationship that VDS and the Divinity Library have, and in particular, um, our commitment to the commitments, right? And I think one of the things that I appreciate most deeply about the way in which those commitments are articulated 
is there articulated as living something to be lived. So it isn't simply that there are tick boxes that suggest sort of you've done this, we can move on, but instead it's part of an ongoing everyday engagement with a whole, whole suite of things. And that there is an opportunity or another day through that living to, you know, uh, bend that moral arc of the universe, then that gives me hope. Thank you so much, Bobby. And thank you all who joined us on Facebook Live. We will see you again for another episode of Meet BDS. Thanks so much, Laura.